in this lecture we will look at the uh, other type of the second type of mismatch called random mismatch so um, we will start first start off with uh, uh, an example device of a capacitor so let us say that the capacitor has a certain width and length um, it's a basically i'm showing the top view of the capacitor so the this is the top plate of the capacitor and of course the capacitance value depends on the area now it turns out that if you actually zoom in to the uh, edges what you will find is that the edges at some level are not going to be uh, completely regular and they are there is going to be some small uh, variation and of course this variation will be completely random um, so in fact one of the things that sets apart uh, a random mismatch from systematic mismatch is the fact that there is some statistical distribution so there is some statistical uh, dependence of these of all uh, uh, or many circuit parameters now uh, let's come back to this example um, because this uh, value now uh, uh, or rather this capacitor now has uh, uh, some variation in its edge at some microscopic level you can talk about a nominal value of capacitance which depends on the area of the plate so the nominal c norm is uh, proportional to w times l but the actual value of the capacitance will be slightly different depending on the uh, you know distribution of these defects so therefore uh, you now need to find a way to uh, 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 figure out how this is going to affect you so let me say that there is going to be some uh, l plus delta l here so i'll show that in blue and this is going to have w plus delta w <coughs> and um, in other words if i take two of these devices two capacitors maybe on the same ic or across ic's i will find that this value of delta w and delta l has a certain distribution and uh, uh, this particular uh, distribution right uh, will most probably be uh, uh, will have a gaussian distribution but one particular a uh, device uh, capacitor may have a particular value of delta w and delta l if i take a different device i could have a completely different value now i need to find out a way to minimize this value of delta l and delta w it turns out if you just do a statistical analysis of this particular structure uh, for example you could slice this into uh, very small strips either in the vertical direction or the horizontal direction <coughs> uh, you will find that the uh, the value uh, when you increase the value of the width in other words let us say you don't do anything to the length and you increase the value of the width it turns out there is some type of averaging effect on both delta w and delta l so it turns out that if you do this delta w by w and delta l by l uh, both decrease similarly you will see the same effect if you increase um, if you increase uh, the value of the length of the uh, plate also right so this means of course that if you want to reduce the relative value of delta w and delta l you have to make sure that the uh, area of the plate is as large as possible now in some cases this is obviously uh, uh, not easily possible because now you need to find some way to compensate for the increased value of the capacitance um, now i will um, <coughs> uh, write that down as maybe three uh, three points the first point is uh, if you want to reduce the random mismatch you use devices with 
large area. Now I have taken the example of a capacitor, but the same is true for a, a, a transistor or a resistor or other types of components also. Now the second thing I wanted to point out, uh, there is a process dependent effect. What do I mean by this? Of course, this is due to microscopic irregularities in the uh, in the edges. If I do a more finely controlled process or maybe in a different way, I may find that delta L by L and delta W by W is already smaller uh, to begin with. Right. So uh, a better process can give you a lower, uh, a tighter distribution of the uh, random mismatch uh, component. And finally, uh, it is possible to use circuit techniques to mitigate uh, mismatch, to mitigate mismatch, random mismatch. Now, uh, you will find that these kinds of effects are, are much more uh, uh, or magnified when you start looking at a class of circuits called differential circuits. Now when we come to those kind of circuits, we will study the mismatch of uh, the differential circuit. For now, we will just take the example uh, of a common source amplifier. Now. Uh, I will assume that the common source amplifier has a resistive load, uh, some resistor R. Uh, the input uh, has some bias uh, VB1. Let us say this resistor is RD and the value uh, of the supply voltage is VDD. <coughs> now what are the parameters that can vary here? The parameters that can uh, vary are the following. If I look simply at low frequencies and I am doing, uh, uh, in fact, let us go one step uh, further and say I am only going to look at the DC bias point of this circuit. Uh, you will find that you could have random variation in RD. Okay, So you can represent that by some delta RD which has a zero mean and some uh, Gaussian distribution. You could have a change in the threshold voltage of the device. Um, so you might have some delta Vt in the device. You expect a threshold voltage of let us say uh, 500 millivolts. The actual threshold voltage of the device may actually be 490 millivolts or 510 millivolts. <coughs> um, uh, apart from these two, you may also have um, an error in, uh, for example, the capacitances uh, associated with the circuit, but we will not look at that. You may also have an error in the uh, mu and cox value. Um, so let us now write down the expression for the nominal value and the distribution around this. But uh, the point is you will represent those things in terms of certain standard parameters. So those standard parameters would be uh, the uh, sigma of the Vt. All of these remember will have a process dependent parameter. Now I am going to call that AVT in this case and uh, it should be noted that they are inversely proportional uh, to the uh, square root of the area. The sigma is uh, inversely proportional to the square root of the area. Sigma squared uh, will be proportional to the uh, inverse of the area itself. Um, <coughs> uh, sigma mu n C ox. Again, you can represent that in terms of this parameter, A mu and C ox. Uh, the variation of resistors and capacitors is usually represented in a relative manner. So remember that the units of A, V, T, A mu and C ox, etc. may not be the same. So this would be A R over root of W times L and finally if you had a capacitance 
this would be AC over root of W times L. Um, what is the effect of uh, having mismatch? Uh, before we do the example, let us quickly cover that. The effect of uh, having a mismatch on any circuit, so let us represent that by, uh, by a two port circuit, by a two port network. It turns out that this effect can be clubbed sim very similar to noise as a combination of two sets of uh, variables, a series voltage and a shunt current. And I'm going to call that some uh, VOS and, and IOS. Now, uh, remember that if I take a particular circuit, it may have a particular value of VOS and IOS. I need to take a large number of circuits, uh, depending on the variation of threshold voltages, resistances, etc. I will see a particular value of input referred offsets VOS and IOS. So VOS is called the input referred offset voltage. and IOS uh, is the input referred offset current. <coughs> Please note that since we are talking about uh, statistical quantities, it is quite possible for uh, VOS and IOS to be correlated. I only say may because it is also possible for them to be completely uncorrelated. So it is possible for them to be wholly or partially correlated. And of course, because we are now dealing with statistical quantities, uh, if uncorrelated, uh, or rather for uncorrelated quantities, you need to use squared quantities in your analysis. In other words, if two quantities, if you are trying to find the offset voltage due to uh, um, uh, 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 a random mismatch or a random variation in the resistance uh, and uh, a transistor VT, these two would move independently and therefore you need to uh, look at the uh, operate in terms of squared quantities. Now let us go back to an uh, uh, to do our example. <coughs> uh, we will do an example of a, a current mirror circuit. So let us say I am going to take a, a, a current mirror and uh, analyze its output current for mismatch. So this is my input uh, transistor. And ideally my output uh, current should be I naught, assuming that uh, M1 and M2 are identical. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to assume uh, variation in certain parameters. For the purposes of this particular example, I am going to assume that there is mismatch only in the threshold voltage of the two devices. So let us say this device has a threshold voltage Vt and M2 uh, has a threshold voltage which is Vt plus delta Vt. Now uh, the minute I do this, uh, the first thing I know is that the, both the devices have the same gate source voltages purely by applying uh, KVL around this loop. So what I know is VGS1 is the same as VGS2. 
but now because the threshold voltages are different uh, there will be a mismatch in the output current uh, so i'll now say that the output current is some i naught plus delta i i need to find out the distribution of delta i in terms of the distribution of delta vt if you do that for this particular circuit the uh, the your job is done so <coughs> uh, how do i find out the value of delta i so the first thing i can do is assume that this delta vt is small obviously nominally the two devices better be uh, identical and therefore any distribution is fairly tightly controlled uh, so i can assume that delta vt is small so that is the uh, other assumption i am going to make once i do this it should be now pretty straightforward because now delta vt um, uh, or rather delta vt is going to cause a change in delta i <laughs> um, so maybe if i write down the equations uh, it will be a little bit clearer before i write down the final quantity so i know this is the basic expression i know that do id by do vgs is the transconductance of the mosfet which is gm but in this particular case i need to find out do id by do vt now looking at the equation <coughs> it should be clear to you that this is uh, the negative of do id by do vgs which is minus gm therefore i can say that for small delta vt the output the change in output current delta i should be equal to minus gm times delta vt now what does this negative sign mean for us what this is telling us is that uh, if m2 has a larger threshold voltage for the same vgs its current will be smaller in other words delta i will be negative if delta vt is positive delta i will be negative and vice versa so that is what that negative sign is telling us <coughs> this is well and good but this is for a particular device for a particular value of delta vt i now need to find out what the distribution of the delta i is so to do that i first need to find out the relative value of this so i need to find out delta i by i not so for a given value of bias current what is the distribution of delta i this is of course minus gm delta vt by i not and um, so let me rearrange this to once i know this what i actually want to find is the distribution okay so i am going to find out sigma squared delta i by i not this is actually what i want i want to find out either the standard deviation or the variance so that i can find out how tight the distribution is of the uh, output current relative to i not of course so this uh, sigma squared delta i by i not is now going to be gm squared by i not squared times sigma squared uh, sigma squared vt and now what is sigma squared vt this is nothing but uh, gm squared by i not squared times a vt squared over w times l now this is telling us that um, for a given a vt in a particular process if you increase the area the relative value if you increase the area of the device the relative effect on delta i becomes smaller um, for a larger bias current this effect becomes smaller and so on right please also note that you have actually lost the sign the negative sign that you originally had that is because once you uh, look at the tightness of the distribution itself the actual dependence of um, of delta i on delta vt no longer matters what you really uh, care about 
are the mean and variance of the uh, dis of the gaussian distribution itself at that point you do not care about uh, this negative particular negative sign 